Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd on the Street, and today we are unboxing the Sonnet Breakaway Box 550. Alright everyone, so this is an eGPU box. This is an external graphics card box, basically. This is probably the last thing that a lot of you would expect me to unbox, so let me explain why I got it. As you may know, I'm currently working on season three of a show for the Nerd on the Street creative channel. The show is called Displaced, and season three is being animated in Blender. I'm doing all the animation myself. I am doing that using my System76 servo workstation, the laptop which is sitting right back here, and it's currently connected to two 4K monitors. It's also connected to an Apple wired aluminum keyboard with uh, a USB ports on the sides of it. It's connected to a 7 port USB-C to USB type A hub in the back of it. It's also connected to a long audio cable that hooks in with my headphones. It's connected to a networking cable for ethernet connectivity. This laptop has taught me something very important. It has taught me that laptops are not the correct form factor to do what I'm doing. The reason I originally got this laptop was because I was traveling at the time that I bought it, back and forth between two locations, and I wanted to be able to take all my work with me, which made sense, but now I'm not traveling so much. Normally when I'm working, it's here at my desk, and I've got my laptop hooked up to 10 other things already, and now I've got an eGPU box. Now my laptop does not have a crappy graphics card in it like a lot of laptops do, when I bought my laptop, I actually thought it would not need this sort of thing because it's got an NVIDIA GTX 1080 in the laptop. It is the mobile variant, but it is a GTX 1080, which was at the time the top of the line. And even today, it's just the second highest in graphics card consumer level that you can get from NVIDIA. So why the heck am I getting an eGPU box? Long story short, uh, that 1080 is faster than anything else I could get in a laptop. Um, it's still just not fast enough for rendering. Rendering every single little thing, that's all that it comes down to is that, you know, on, on my old computer that I had before this laptop, it's still sitting in this room over there, my old computer would have needed an hour to render a frame of, uh, of my series, and this laptop can do it in 10 minutes, which is way faster, but 10 minutes of frame still really adds up to many, many, many hours when you're rendering out an entire feature length season of a show. What this is going to let me do is add a second graphics card to the mix. I'll talk about what cards I'll be trying to put in it later, but basically I'll be able to plug in a second graphics card to the laptop, and that is going to have several advantages. For one thing, I'll be able to render to the graphics card without taking up the laptop's internal graphics processing power, which is important because right now, I don't have my laptop rendering in its GPU right now. Right now it's rendering with its CPU while we're doing this video in the background. My laptop is rendering, but it's using the processor because when I'm rendering using my internal graphics, Blender uses up 100% of my graphics and I can't really do anything else with the computer while it's doing that. So for one thing, I'll be able to render with graphics with this card whenever I am using the laptop and it won't affect my usage of the laptop for doing other things like editing video, working on my websites and things like that. But then when I'm not using the laptop, I can still render on the laptop itself, uh, but with this I'll be able to render one thing on the external card at the same time as I'm rendering another thing on the internal card. So even if I just got another 1080 to put into this thing and I had a 1080 in the box and a 1080 in the laptop, that would still double the speed that I'm getting this series rendered effectively. So that's why I got this thing. I'll get into it more, like I said, what exactly I'll be using with it. Uh, but this is the Sonnet EGFX Breakaway Box 550 is what it says. The 550 in the model name refers to the fact that this version comes with a 550 watt power supply. You can change that out yourself. So if you want to try getting the cheaper version that's a 300 something watt power supply, you can do that and then upgrade it to a 550 or even a, a higher end power supply if you want to. I just wanted to pick up one that had a, a decent power supply in it to begin with. Top of the box just has, like I just showed, it's got some very light writing on it. This side of the box here has a sticker with just what the product includes repeated in many different languages. Uh, the back of the box has a little picture of it down here and then the other side as the other part of that picture just says Thunderbolt down here. My laptop does have a Thunderbolt port. It's got one USB Type-C port and then one Thunderbolt port. Now even though those two ports look identical, you can plug a USB-C device into Thunderbolt and it will work, but you cannot plug a Thunderbolt device 
into USB-C and expect it to work. This only works with actual Thunderbolt ports, Intel Thunderbolt ports, not USB Type-C ports. The reason is because USB is obviously meant for external peripherals and things like mice, webcams, that sort of thing, whereas Thunderbolt actually provides a direct interface into the PCI bus of the computer. Um, and graphics cards, obviously, you plug in using PCI Express. So it's going to be like this was a desktop computer and I'm putting a graphics card into it. Thunderbolt is just a way to do that in small form factor computers like laptops. So we're gonna open this thing up because I've been talking for quite long enough and we will pull open this tab here. This box arrived in a packing box that was exactly the same size as this, uh, but it had you know the, the shipping sticker on it, but no, uh, no extra padding around that. So hopefully there'll be some padding inside of here. Nothing written up here. Down here we've got a couple of pictures of the device. Not gonna worry too much about showing that stuff because we should see the device pretty soon. Open this up and some flaps and here, in here we've cut the device itself. Um, happy to see that the device is a little bit smaller than this box. Uh, I did read online, people were, were talking about how this box is just as big as a desktop computer would be anyway. Um, of course it's cheaper because it doesn't have to, you know, it doesn't have a motherboard, a full motherboard anyway. It doesn't have a, doesn't need a processor in it. It doesn't have RAM. And you can actually get some eGPU boxes that come with extra things on them like USB ports or other Thunderbolt or USB Type-C ports on them so that you can sort of have a, a hub built into your external GPU. I specifically did not want one of those. I've already got a 7 port USB hub and all kinds of other crap already plugged into my laptop like I said. So I'm not too worried about cable management at this point. My laptop's going to have things plugged into all of its ports. That's just how things are at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and take this out of the box. Before we do that, it looks like we've got a manual here, which is actually, this is like a full eight and a half by 11 booklet. Uh, this is just stapled together pages. We'll look at that. Set that back there for now. And here, here is the box. So if I can pull that up out of there, here we go. All right, and this is gonna exit the frame for just a moment because down here, in this box, we've got just a couple more things. We've got a power cable, which it looks like a standard United States three-prong, you know, standard power cable like you'd see plugged into any other computer thing. And then the Thunderbolt cable, which is very, very short. But like I said, you need a Thunderbolt cable and you probably want to stick with the shorter one. You don't want a big long cable and you don't want USB-C because those things just won't work with something that needs direct connectivity like this box. All right, so at this point, the huge box is empty, so we will set that on the ground. And here is our breakaway box right here. We'll take the styrofoam off of it here. Just fits nicely. This is all one piece. Pretty, pretty solid packaging, which I would expect. And we've just got a plastic bag around the thing here. It's taped together in the back. So we'll open it up. Okay. Here we go. So this is the breakaway box itself. This is what's going to be sitting on your desk if you want to use this sort of uh, setup. I'm actually going to bring the camera in just a little closer here. Okay, looks like we've got an all right angle going. So we'll take a look around here. This is the side of the case. Uh, and this actually... This case has three thumb screws on the back to take apart. Um, we'll just spin it around here. This is what it looks like when it's put together. It's got a fan grill on either side of it. And then the front of it has the Sonnet logo here, which does light up blue when the thing's turned on and connected. Um, it says Sonnet down here and breakaway box there. It's got a grill on the bottom of the front. It looks very, very sleek, which you want it to because this is going to have to sit on your desk next to your laptop. As I was saying, there are three thumb screws on the back, very tight on there, so I'm gonna go get a screwdriver. And even though this box has thumb screws like a desktop computer, um, unlike a regular desktop, it doesn't just have one side of it come off. If you want to take the thing apart to get inside of it, you actually have to take the entire top covering off, which would take the, the top and both sides off of it. It actually reminds me of the prototype desktop computer that System76 is working on building. 
Um, I don't have the little the little prototype demonstration box that they gave me to show you what I'm talking about, but I showed it in a previous video, and this is similar to what uh, System76 is working on for their actual computers. But at this point, we can lift up, grabbing these little notches in the back and lifting. There we go. We can lift up this entire siding. Okay, so it does slide off after you get it off part way. I think it's just metal. Just whatever you need to do to get it apart. There we go. We won't break anything important there. Um, taped to the inside of this, if you can see here, it taped to the inside of one of the fan grills. We've got a plastic bag. It comes with three zip ties and an extra thumb screw, if you can see there. So you get that, and then inside the box. Here is the power supply. This is a, a fairly small power supply. That's not a full-size desktop power supply. Although I think you can replace it. I think you can replace it with a, a full desktop power supply. Maybe you can't. You can see there uh, what it looks like in the back. Unfortunately, I don't just have a, a spare power supply laying on hand to show you compared to this one. Plugged into this little miniature motherboard though, it does look like a a 20 pin connector like you'd get from any old power supply. So if you do want to replace this with a bigger one, you're free to do so. This is basically a small computer, uh, but like I mentioned before, all it's got is just one PCI Express slot for you to put the uh, graphics card into. We've got a header there, um, a header there. Maybe you can put audio things or USB ports or something. Um, into this thing. They're not built into the case, but like I said, some other breakaway boxes do include extra ports and stuff on them, and a lot of these things, a lot of these different breakaway boxes actually are just the same boards inside of different cases. There was another one called the Atikio Node um, that I actually thought about getting that because it had been documented that that one worked on Linux, and this one, nobody has documented the Sonnet breakaway box working on Linux. Um, but I think that the boards inside of them are very, very similar, if not the exact same board. You can see the, uh, the serial number right there to compare if you, if you want to try and do that. But yeah, we'll see uh, if we can get this thing working on Linux. I didn't mention that earlier, but I am running everything on Linux. So this is going to be a little, a little dicey, a little interesting. Uh, I actually want to try and get an AMD graphics card and see if uh, one of their high-end graphics cards will work at the same time as my internal NVIDIA card is powering my displays, if I can get an AMD card to Blender render because they're great at that. If not though, I should be able to get an NVIDIA card working in here since I've got the NVIDIA driver running anyway for my laptop's internal card. It's not like I'm going to have to install anything extra for that. Um, in the back here, we've got a big fan. This is way bigger than my laptop's internal fans. That's another reason why next time I get a computer, definitely gonna be a desktop because my laptop's fans are small, which means they're higher pitched and I can hear them a lot easier. Uh, but yeah, this is a nice large fan for this thing. I've heard this is one of the quietest external GPU boxes you can get, uh, which is nice because I've already got 10 fans running in this room at any given time. And this is just the power cord running from the front of the box, or that must be the power light cord because there is no power button on the front. Okay, so this is where you would put your graphics card. I'm actually going to end the video here. And I know it's like, we just got this thing out of the box. Why are we ending the video here? The reason is because, like I said, I'm actually not sure exactly what graphics card I'm going to use in this thing. And I am running Linux, so I'm expecting it to take me a while to get set up and working properly. I'm going to start by testing it with my personal NVIDIA 650 Ti Boost. Um, and if that works, I might run to Micro Center tomorrow and pick up an AMD graphics card. Um, or I might try and borrow a 980 from someone who I know and put that in here. Uh, but I'll have to figure out what works in terms of drivers and stuff. Now rest assured, this is something uh, a little bit more technical and more expensive than what I normally do on this channel. So I will definitely document, um, if I get it working in Linux, how I did so. So stay tuned for that. Let me know if you have any questions about uh, external GPUs in general or about the Sonnet Breakaway Box in particular. But for now, that was just a quick unboxing. I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm the Nerd of the Street, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.